I wanted to try a thing for a video and a live stream and show you what I do for like this weekly reset that I do every Sunday usually where I take the time to plan out the entire week and kind of get a good like lay of the land and like everything that's going on and I know that a lot of you are super busy just like me and there's a lot going on and it can be difficult sometimes to find the time to work on things related to your business. So I wanted to share what I do. And while it is not a foolproof method, <laughs> it is something that has definitely helped me quite a bit uh, stay on top of everything and stay organized. So I wanted to take the time to walk you through it. So this is going to be a little bit of like, you know, like hang out with me kind of live stream. So feel free if you are finding this, please you know, like jump in, ask questions, leave comments as I'm going through stuff. We're going to be talking about like all things planning, um, but I'm going to do this real time. And usually the weekly reset, I'm trying to keep it to about an hour, but just depending on how much is going on, sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but really like spending this like one hour to plan every week is something that helps so much in keeping on top of stuff. So anyway, hang out with me <laughs> for the next hour while I do my weekly reset. I I'm just going to pull up, I'll pull this up here. So this is the list that I make for my weekly reset. Anything that you do on a regular, like routine basis in your business, I highly suggest making a literal checklist for all of the steps. I have weekly reset checklists. I have a monthly reset checklist. I have when I do like my financial routine every month that has a checklist so that I don't have to like remember <laughs> every week or every month what I'm supposed to be doing. And that takes like a lot of the stress away. So this is our weekly reset and I'll be walking you through it. So the first thing that we are going to do, I am going to schedule my workouts for the week. And then I'll make this a little bit bigger uh, so you can see it. First thing we are going to do is schedule our workouts. I'm going to pull up my calendar. I'm not going to share all my screens with you because I don't think you want to see the nonsense that's on my calendar, but I usually I'll pull up my calendar on my computer just so I can see everything. And then where I work out at our CrossFit gym, we use an app called Waterfy. We sign up for the workouts beforehand. So I'm pulling up my schedule for this week and I showed this on a previous video. I'll see if I can find it put the link in the comments, but it is a video about how I go about like time blocking for my schedule and my like my workouts, my fitness routine are super important to me. So in my in my Google calendar, what I already have like planned out every week is usually Monday through Saturday. I have my workouts planned out. So like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm definitely at the gym. Saturdays, I've been kind of changing and experimenting with a few different things. And then Thursday, I usually work out at home. But all of these things are already in my calendar. So I'm just going to go ahead and register for all the classes. All right, so we've got our workouts scheduled. So I checked that one off. Planning out meals. So I work with, with my husband. We kind of coordinate our like weekly meal schedule and figure out what kind of groceries we need, what we're going to be eating. Planning all of that out, kind of having an idea of it going into the week is helpful. And then we'll get our groceries. But we already have that planned out for this week. So I'm going to go ahead and check those off. Usually I will revisit my budget as well and just kind of get an idea for where things are at just to make sure that I am on top of my finances. So I'm going to check in on that next. I use an app called YNAV for You Need a Budget if you haven't heard of it. And I really, I like it a lot. It really like helps to streamline a lot of the financial stuff, like managing business finances, personal finances, and then shared finances with my husband. It helps quite a bit. And then like this software too, this one for the weekly reset, it is, it's called Notion. And that's what this software is where I have this list and it's a project management tool. And I'll leave a link for this stuff, these softwares uh, down below as well. I have like a whole, I think it's a blog post on my website about like the different tools that I use. Um, so you can check it out. 
And I forgot to mention, but something else that I really like to do uh, is I bring at least two beverages <laughs> to my weekly refit. Um, this one, and then I have a water cup over here. Um, this is Trader Joe's like spicy chai latte um but bringing like a warm beverage in my water um helps to make it like i don't know for lack of a better word a little bit more fun <laughs> to do this so i kind of like bribe myself to do the weekly reset and uh something else that um i'll tell you about while we are uh checking out my budget here yesterday uh my husband and i we did what i found i think on tiktok is where like i found this term but it's called a rot day um and i'd love to hear in the in the chat or in the comments um if rot days are something that you do um but it's like a new thing that i am starting to like plan for in my schedule um where like recently i would say like the past couple of weeks like things have just been getting like like a little bit harder like my days are like really really booked kind of like from morning to night um and it's getting to be like a little bit much for me to handle every single week um so i uh, Kyle and I decided to do uh, this rot day yesterday where we didn't do anything. Our plan was to do nothing. Um, and it was like a really good like mental reset. Um, got to just kind of hang out. We spent time together, which was really nice. Um, ate a bunch of cookies, <laughs> uh, which was also nice. <laughs> and um, it was definitely something that I needed because like every day just kind of feels so fast paced. Uh, so if you feel like things are just like go, go, go all the time and it's just getting to be too, too much, um, I definitely recommend checking that out or trying it, I guess. Okay, so for budgeting, I use YNAB software in this weekly reset list is on Notion, just in case uh, you're interested. Okay, so I'm checking on my business budget, make sure things look good there, uh, which they do, which is great. And then checking on my personal budget, I, I don't know if you've heard of the profit first method. I've made at least one other video about that here on this channel. Um, and it's the, from a book called Profit First by Mike Michalowicz, which I highly recommend to every business owner about managing your business finances. But I, I've been using the Profit First method in my business for years. Uh, and then I just kind of had this brain blast last year that maybe I should try using the profit first method in my personal finances. So I have been experimenting with that and I do think it is something that has been helping me stick to my budget a little bit better, um, which has been great. Obviously, of course, <laughs> you know, to stick to, stick to a budget. But if you haven't um, checked that out before, I would definitely recommend it. Um, you can find the book on, on Amazon and you can find the book anywhere. Um, but it was super, super good. So budget looks good. Check your bank account, making sure that that looks good as well. And then the next thing that I am going to check out is is my weekly review table so weekly review table you might have seen it was a couple weeks ago that I did a video on creating a vision board and um, well I started doing this weekly review table before the vision board thing um, the vision or the weekly review table that I have started doing um, is something that is helping me to stay on track with the uh with the vision board i think so every week um as part of this this reset i open up um a table that i have and kind of do like a a week in review week preview thing um where i ask myself a few different questions and check in with my 
uh, goals for tasks that I wanted to achieve over the past week. So I think we'll be able to see here, like a few of the things that I ask myself, these like for the brain dump, these questions are things that I just started putting in this weekly review table. So I write in here what went well in the past week, uh, what could be improved, did I accomplish my objectives from last week? Uh, and what are my objectives for this week? And I think this is a great way to give myself a little bit more accountability when it comes to working on projects. Um, because I can kind of like, I write out and like set my goals for the week of like the top two to three things that I need to get done. And then the following week I actually do check in. Um, and I will put like the actual emojis of, um, a check mark if I did it, um, an X if I didn't do it and a, uh, like a, an hourglass if it's something that is like in progress and that I'm working on. So that's really something that has been very helpful. So things that have gone well in the past week. Sometimes this can be a little bit more difficult um, to try to come up with something, but um, just take practice. And sometimes I'll have to look at my calendar too um, and figure out <laughs> like what even happened last week. Um, oh, I guess like one example of things that went well in the past week, um, had, I think, three to four new inquiries for physical therapy, which is cool. Um, I have been working with a few people at the gym now on, in particular, like shoulder problems and uh it's been going really well so you know like it's it's of course it's a process and it's not an overnight thing but um i've been really happy with the results so far um and i've been sharing about that and so i've had more some more inquiries i really do like working with people on shoulder stuff um <clears throat> so that's been cool um i am so i've been setting up a little bit more of a uh, sales funnel um, in the like business coaching, uh, aspect of things, uh, where I've been like working really hard and trying to like double down on things that are one working and <laughs> things that are like already working in the business to bring in new leads and new clients. Um, but I have also been trying to continue to double down on things that, I like to do. For example, I'm making content. I, re I really like making content, especially video content. Um, it's something that I always go to, to find answers for things or tutorials and, and all of that. So uh, being able to contribute and offer like video content here on YouTube and continue to grow the channel is something that I really like to do. Um, no matter you know what the results end up being, I really like it. Uh, so I've been trying to continue to mold my marketing strategy into something that uh, fits those two criteria. Like what is working <laughs> and what do I like doing? And that's been going well. So I'm going to add that into my weekly review table. Uh, continuing to build and improve the funnel, pipeline, and marketing strategy for this coaching. Um, and ways that I'm seeing this uh, improve is uh, we are, my assistant and I, we are able to speak with more people, um, starting more conversations, uh, booking more calls, whether it is a consultation call or a sales call, um, which if you are interested, you can go to my website, uh, morganmeets.com slash book a call. And I do free consultations. Like if you are a physical therapist or a healthcare provider, and you're wanting to start your own private solo practice, and you're looking for help, if you're curious about like business coaching or what it is that I have to offer, you can always book a consultation. And, um, we just, we sit down and take the time to, to talk about where you're at, to see if what I have to offer is the right fit for you. 
Um, and if not, like I'm happy to point you in the right direction either way. And then as far as what could be improved, right now I am running an ad campaign for my mini course, uh, Therapy Business Basics, which you can also find on my website. Um, and the whole goal of the, the mini course is to help you figure out how to set up a business entity uh, quickly, simply, if you want to have your own solo practice, and how to do really easy like uh, documentation, accepting payment, uh, scheduling, that kind of a thing um and just all the basics <laughs> that you could need to set up your business um so if you're interested in that you can check it out but i'm experimenting with running paid advertising to the mini course which i've kind of like dabbled with in the past uh, i set up a um an ad campaign for it in January and it went really well. It was profitable and made way more sales than I thought it would. Um, and then this month it has been a little bit slower. So like I'm working with my business coach to figure out like what exactly is going on. Um, and just continuing to, to test, you know, if this is a good uh, avenue um, for this this course. And then the other thing is making sure that I am sticking with um, sticking with my schedule and trying not to bend over backwards too much to accommodate different things um, because I am only one person with only so much time and uh, I have to continue to make sure that I'm taking care of myself so I can keep you know doing doing my best in all the different channels of things. So if you are, if you're here live and watching, if you want to comment and say hi, you totally can. Um, and let me know if you are working on doing your own weekly planning right now, or if that's something that you incorporate uh, into your week. Next piece is, did I accomplish my objectives from last week? So last week, a couple of my objectives were to one, finish module two, in a program, a course that I'm taking right now on building up a YouTube channel. Um, and I did. Uh, that's been, I've been on my list for a few weeks to finish module two. Um, and I've been putting it off, but um, finally finished that onto module three and starting to uh, build out a better workflow for you two, uh, which I'm really excited about and I'm probably going to work on after we do the weekly reset here. And then the other thing that I wanted to do was update my schedule according to my goals on my vision board. Uh, haven't done that yet, but also might work on that today. So now that we've gone through this, um, we can pull that up. My next, uh, the next part is to empty my email inbox. So I'm going to get started on that. Um, and let me know if you have any questions on that. Now, usually I'll, I'll try of anywhere between like 10 and 20 emails in my inbox, uh, by Sunday morning. I try not to open it on Saturday. I try to take Saturday off sometimes Friday. Um, but then it's helpful to just kind of go through all of them, um, and answer things that I need to answer or, uh, anything that needs action, I will add it to my, uh, inbox in Notion. Uh, this is something that's really helpful if you don't already do this is, um, having an inbox in just a place where you can like always put notes of things that you want to get done. I use the inbox in Notion, but I also use an app on my phone called Tick Tick, uh, which is great for just like daily reminders of things that I need to do because like trying to remember everything is way too much. So anytime I think of something that it's like, okay, I need to like take action on this, um, I'll put it into the inbox. And then every week, as you'll see as part of the, the weekly reset, um, we work to process uh, the inbox. So I'll go through all the tasks and, and kind of check out what's going on in there. One thing that's been kind of new, if you are somebody who does uh, email marketing, is um, there, I, I, I'm not sure like what this is related to, but in the past couple of months, there have been issues popping up with different email marketing tools around um, 
your domain not being verified uh, in order to, to send emails and improving deliverability if you have a verified domain. So uh, if that's something that you haven't seen, um, but you do email marketing, you might want to look into it. I know my mom um, had an issue with it with Flowdesk last month, and then I just started getting flagged about it either last month or this month on um, Active Campaign. So something to look into for sure. And it's not super difficult to, to figure it out. Um, it's just adding uh, updated CNAME records to your domain, um, wherever your domain is hosted. And I know like here, like Active Campaign has like exact instructions on what to do and what values to add and everything. So it usually just takes a couple of minutes. Oh, okay. I just got an email from Active Campaign about it. So beginning this month, Google, Google and Yahoo are introducing new email authentication requirements. These changes apply to all senders with a more pronounced impact on deliverability for bulk senders. Um, from Active Campaign, to ensure your emails continue to reach your audience seamlessly, we recommend taking the following actions within the platform. Set up uh, DKIM and DMARC for all sending domains. Uh, purchase domains if you are currently sending from an at gmail.com address. The good news is that you can effortlessly purchase and or authenticate all your domains directly within the platform in a matter of minutes and for a limited time, Active Campaign is covering the cost of one domain for a year up to $12. That's great. So if you're somebody who hasn't, if you haven't bought a domain yet for your business, definitely recommend doing so. Um, you know, I totally understand not wanting to uh, you know, spend a ton of money on your business right away. But I do believe that a, a custom domain for your business is important for credibility. And it does obviously, like we just talked about, help with email deliverability. Uh, and when it comes to trying to cut costs in different places, domains are usually anywhere between 10 and $20 a year. Um, so it's not really the place where you're going to save a bunch of money. Um, and definitely worth the cost. So right now I'm writing back to an email that I received from one of my clients that I worked with over the past few years, uh, both as her business coach and um, my assistant Taylor and I, we did done for you marketing for her for the better part of 2023. And she, so she's been in business now for four years. Um, and she's done a great job. And um, she was just emailing me and telling me about how she is going to start a new chapter in her career and take a new position as a um, staff clinician again. And I, I wanted to share this because um, I, like, I think, of course, like, I'm a huge fan of working for yourself. If you've been around for a little while, you might know that. Um, but a uh, huge fan of working for yourself, huge fan of having a solo practice and, you know, treating patients the way that you want to treat patients. But I also know, and I want you to know that just because I'm a huge fan of it doesn't mean that, like it's the only way or the like, like correct way to do things. Um, and it's not for everybody or like in this person's case, um, they worked really hard for four years and they did great. Um, and like, just as time goes by, sometimes things change. And I want you to know that too, that, you know, just because you decide to start a business doesn't mean you have to only do the business for the rest of your life. You can, if you want to, but you also don't have to, if you don't want to. Um, it's totally okay to start it and try it and change paths um, and do something else, but like you're only going to come out better for having tried something new and learned a bunch of skills um, and done all of the things. So, you know, like if you are afraid of starting your own practice and starting your own business because like you don't know if you'll like it or you don't know if you want to do it long term, you don't know if it'll work long term, etc. Um, it might not, you might not like it, but the only way that you will know for sure is by trying it. Um, 
So just just throwing it out there, and it's also like with with this person's case, it's totally okay to change your mind at any point too. Um, I've worked with a few people where like that's been the case, but uh, like I said, you'll only find out by trying. So I just wanted to throw that out there too. Um, and like uh, this person said, they are going to work at an in gym clinic, and it's a pretty small team. Um, and then they wrote, words will never fully express how amazing and difficult this journey has been over the past four years and the amount of help and inspiration that I've gotten from you and your support will be in my soul forever. You are an inspiration and the absolute best coach I never thought I needed slash could have asked for. Um, which is so sweet. <laughs> so nice. So I'm just um, responding back to them. Almost done with the inbox. I just got an email from something called Find Help Clinics. Um, it looks like it's a listing site. And I have not heard about this before. Interesting. Um, I think I like it. Like, uh, I'm not sure if I have, I don't think I have like an official listing on Yelp or anything. But, um... There are a lot of other listing sites that you can list your practice on, um, whether it is Yelp, obviously Google, 100%. If you are a local business, you need to be on Google uh, and have a Google business profile. Um, but another one that I really liked that's kind of a combination between paid advertising and like just being a general listing site that I have a few of my clients on is called Thumbtack. Um, and the way Thumbtack works is a, it's a listing site, it's a database where people can search for like physical therapists near me. Um, and you only pay for the service if a qualified lead contacts you. And it might even be if you like accept the lead as well, like if they end up becoming like a paying client and you pay for the lead. Um, I can't forget. I, I can't remember 100% exactly how it works, but uh, it's something like that. Like it's free to use unless you get an actual client from it and then you pay for that lead. Um, so if you're not on Thumbtack um, and you are a local business owner, definitely worth uh, checking on um, because we've we've had pretty good success with it. It's not something where we get like a ton of leads from it. But um, at one point we were getting probably one or two leads a month. And I know other people have had good success um, with it. And it just kind of seems to like vary month to month and throughout the year, but it's free to use. So you might as well put yourself on there. Um, it's not very hard to do either. Okay. So we finally made it through going through um, email inbox. So I'll check all of these off. And then um, the next process is actually to empty my physical inbox, but I'll save that until later because I'm probably gonna like stand up. I have like this like folder or um, like hanging like file organizer on my wall over here. And that's where I put all my mail throughout the week. So like every Sunday I just go through everything. Um, so I'll probably just save that for the end for myself for today. But um, I put that on here, uh, empty physical inbox, just so I don't forget. <laughs> and I don't let a bunch of like papers um, stack up. The next thing is so in Notion, like you guys can see this like 28 updates here. Um, I use Notion pretty much for everything when it comes to managing like all my business tasks. Uh, and so like the updates are things where like myself and my team were commenting back and forth. Um, it's updates about new leads coming in, uh, updates on my CRM. So the next thing that I am going to do is start to go through um, the, uh, the different updates that I have. Okay, so I've gone through pretty much all of my um, task update notifications. Um, and I do still have, like you can see <laughs> up in the corner, um, 10 updates there uh, that are related to tasks that are upcoming. So now um, we are going to start the process of going through like all of the kind of like, like not started and pending tasks. Um, coming into the upcoming week. Uh, and as you can see here, um, the next thing that we have, um, and I will uh, update this here, start collecting 
tasks that are not started slash ending uh, is coming up next. Um, I will check for, I used to use Google Keep a little bit more to keep track of tasks, but now mainly it is uh, Tick Tick, like I mentioned. It is an app that I really like to use on my phone um, to help me keep track of things. The inbox in Notion. Um, which I have up here as well. So process the items in the inbox. Um, and then I also have a whiteboard that sits here in front of my computer that I do really like. Like if you're somebody who works on the computer a lot, like I have a big monitor here and my keyboard. Um, I have this whiteboard that's probably like, I don't know, maybe like six, seven inches tall and maybe like 15 inches long and it sits really well in front of the monitor so I can take notes of like different tasks I need to do while I'm having meetings. Um, so that's been really helpful, but I'll check in those three different places to see uh, what I need to do next. Just scheduled a new client for physical therapy. So I'm sending over the paperwork. Um, my process for that is I always send an appointment confirmation. I use Acuity scheduling and then um, I email over the intake form and the consent form on Google Forms. So just set that up. Okay, next things. All right, so next I'm like looking at um, the tasks that I have in Tick Tick for this week. Um, got a couple things. I'm going to reschedule. Um, I do remind myself to put my laundry in the washer, so I have to do that. Um, a couple of client things. See anything else for this week? And I've got a couple things I have to do tomorrow. Um, okay, so then the next process um, is like making sure everything is like written in the inbox or if there's anything like left over. Um, I do a lot of um, time blocking for tasks and this is something that is uh, new, newish. Well, I've done it like back and forth a little bit, um, but what I like to do is I have like my list of tasks for the week and then I actually will like go into my calendar and um, add in the time to complete the tasks um, because otherwise it is difficult to get everything done. Um, so I'm going to go back through my calendar from last week and check to see if there's anything that I didn't complete, which there definitely is. Um, and then the way that I check it off, um, I was sharing this with one of my other clients last week. It is like, I'll put all my tasks in and they're the color of the calendar event is pink. And then the way that I mark them off in here is um, through, uh, I like just color the, the calendar event green when I'm done. Cool, so I'm checking that stuff off. Great, and then next I'm just gonna go through and uh, process the items in my inbox. This usually means like going through, I look at all the tasks, um, I write out the, um, who's gonna do it. So whether it's myself or am I delegating it to somebody, the due dates, um, whether it's going to be a one-time task or a recurring thing, the priority and the project that it's for, and then it will sort it into the other databases. Uh, and then I'll also review my private client projects. So right now we have two uh, done for you marketing clients and like that includes social media content, email content, uh, website content, updating the website. I will also go in and review True Coach, which is where I keep all the home exercise programs for my physical therapy and like uh, strength training clients. Um, and then once I plan all of that out, I will look at all my tasks for the upcoming week and figure out what needs to get done, like absolutely 100% done this week. Like if I do nothing else, because I'll probably have like 20 tasks assigned to it, um, what else can I get, or like what, what like top three things can I get done? Um, 
if nothing else got done, what would I be like satisfied with that it's done? Um, and probably this is going to start to include um, some of the stuff from my vision board and also a lot of YouTube related things. I have to plan out content for um, next month and um, also work on my funnels. Like I said, I've got projects to work on for my marketing clients um, and just keeping up with uh, the physical therapy stuff as well. So um, I am probably going to head off now um because i know this live stream has been going for about an hour and a half and i really appreciate everybody for stopping by um but i hope this was helpful to you um just kind of like a you know a checklist of what i go through every week to make sure that i'm on top of everything because there is a lot going on whether you're doing something like me something similar or you know you have another business that you're running uh planning out the week ahead of time helps with like today I basically like make all my decisions for the week and then throughout the week all I have to do is execute on those decisions um versus trying to plan day to day to day uh that can get a little hairy and eventually like I've tried this a couple of times doing like monthly planning at a time um and that can be kind of helpful again to look at it like from a big like zoomed out view of you know, if I only get one or two things done this entire month, like one or two projects, what do those things need to be? Um, and that can be helpful. But let me know if you have any questions um, or want to see another like done with me kind of weekly reset or monthly reset. And I can definitely do that. Uh, but otherwise, I hope you have a good rest of your day.